Thank you, Maggie, for reading our text today, Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. I will share parts of it again as we go through. Just as I sat down to pen the first words of this sermon, my daughter, Vanessa, sat beside me and asked, why is Chicago so dangerous? Both of my children in their early 20s are trying to live freely without their mom being too worried about them in the city, which presents danger on several fronts. First, within the communities in which they move, possible danger at the hands of young people even younger than they. And then they are also concerned about violence at the hands of police officers, as Derek Chauvin gets 22 and a half years for taking the life of George Floyd while a running video did not deter him one bit. I never imagined that my children in this generation would have to worry about such things. In 1971, Marvin Gaye penned the song that seems to be timeless, What's Going On? Hear the lyrics. Mother, mother, there's too many of you crying. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you dying. You know, we've got to find a way to bring some loving here today. Then he says, Father, Father, we don't need to escalate. You see, war is not the answer, for only love can conquer hate. You know we've got to find a way to bring some loving here today. Picket lines and picket signs don't punish me with brutality. Talk to me so you can see What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, what's going on? And 50 years later, Marvin, I agree that we've got to find a way to bring some loving here today. 50 years later, we have not found the way. I hear Vanessa's question first, certainly as a concerned mother. Both of my children now have childhood friends who have been taken by gun violence. The young lady that Han lifted in prayer, Sierra Jones, is a young lady that I used to carry to church. For many years, as I served at Greater St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church, in, in Inglewood. We picked her up, we brought her to church, she sang in the choir, she was in the young people's department. She did more in the church, she was there every Sunday. Today at 25, she's dead. So it hits me hard, it hits my children hard, but it also hits me hard as a pastor in the city of Chicago. For the young lady was a member of the church in Inglewood, the church where I answered my call to ministry. She was sweet, innocent, and did not deserve to die. The gun violence in our city is an epidemic. It's an enormous problem. More than 1,500 people shot in Chicago since January 2021. 40 children shot in Chicago last month. As a clergy person and as a pastor in Chicago, this haunts me. And my hope is that you would be worried if it didn't. What am I, as a messenger of the good news of Jesus Christ, 
if I have nothing to do or say about the biggest threat to life in Chicago. So I hear my daughter's question as a mother and then also as a pastor. And then I hear it as an American. For there are people around the world who are asking, not as, why is Chicago so violent, but why is America so violent? I had an hour conversation when I was in Ghana last year with a young man, 21 years old, a Ghanaian brother who helped me in the hotel with my luggage. And we sat down and talked a little bit. And he told me that any time their friends or family from Ghana say they're coming to America, they are concerned and afraid because of the violence. So let's be clear that this is not just the black community. This is not just Chicago. This is America. And the question, why is America so violent? Please know that there are answers to that question. Sociologists and anthropologists and psychologists understand America's violence. Historians understand America's violence and Chicago's violence in ways that the average person either does not understand or refuses to acknowledge. They have studied history and both race and racism, poverty and wealth and the culture of violence in the society that the right to bear arms is the second amendment to the constitution. There are answers to this question. And the answers include some inconvenient truths we as a country seem to not want to face. To face them as a community would make us the exception to the rule. For you see, not only do sociologists and anthropologists and psychologists have answers to the question, why is Chicago and why is America so violent, theologians, can also contribute to the conversation to understand this violence. Violence and the pleading for it to stop permeates the scriptures. From the story of Cain killing his brother Abel to the violence done towards Israelites enslaved in Egypt to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Violence is a hot biblical topic. So the question about violence is also a theological question, yet an even more poignant question and the question that haunts me daily as a clergy person in Chicago is what are we going to do about it? I hear you, I hear some inquisitive person saying, who is we? Given that churches and pastors are among the most criticized for doing nothing about the violence in Chicago, we, if we choose to engage the violence, would apparently be the exception to the rule. And that's exactly what I see in the text today that the text is trying to teach us this morning, a text I've preached more than any text, but it keeps on speaking a different word, a relevant word for the time, that our faith in Jesus calls us to be the exception to the rule. This very familiar story, often thought of as the story of the woman with the issue of blood, shows us exceptional acts by people of faith that ultimately lead to life. Jesus and his disciples have come, just come to the area and a great crowd gathered around him. Verse 22 says, then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at Jesus' feet, begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. 
Scholars believe that Jairus, a synagogue ruler, is a person of wealth and prestige, and given his privileged position and power, is the least likely person to come and fall at Jesus' feet. He's possibly used to people coming to him. Maybe not falling on to their feet, maybe falling on their knees in front of him, asking for help. But his child is dying. His daughter is dying and, and he is desperate, but the gospel writer points out his privilege and his power so that we would know that Jairus is an exception to the rule. And so are we too called to be the exception? Don't allow your position, your privilege, and your power stop you from petitioning Jesus. Don't let it stop you from calling on God, calling on divine intervention when you are in need. Or closer to the text and to my heart today when children are dying. Let's be like Jairus, an exception to the rule. Jairus was a faith leader who when his child was dying, he put all the protocols and expectations of others on him to the side. And he went and fell at Jesus' feet and begged repeatedly that Jesus heal his daughter. 40 children were shot in one month in Chicago, yet I wonder how many faith leaders are talking about it this morning. Unfortunately, to talk about it this morning is to be an exception to the rule, but I believe to be a follower of Christ, we are called to be the exception. To cry out, Lord, our children are dying and we need your help. To say we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied as long as children are being shot. Lord, please help. As the story continues, the text says Jesus goes with Jairus to go to heal his daughter. And in verse 25 reads, now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I could but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, the text says, her hemorrhaging stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and he said, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see this crowd pressing in on you, Jesus? How can you say who touched me? Jesus knows certainly that in the midst, that he's amidst the crowd and that many people are pressing in on him, touching him, but one touch was the exception to the rule. We can be around Jesus, among the crowd around Jesus, and can be in such need. Yet it's quite possible that to be in that crowd, yet seeking true healing is to be the exception to the rule. You see, the world is made up of us. And our wellness contributes to the wellness of the whole community. So we marvel at the violence in the community while there is violence going on in our own worlds and in our own homes and in our own spirits. This woman represents for us the need to acknowledge our own need for healing. It appears that to seek one's own healing is to be the exception to the rule. I encourage you to be the exception today. For I serve a God who is well able, even with everything going on, God taught me a long time ago to not lean to my own understanding. 
I believe and continue to believe that if we reach like this woman in the text, despite everything going on around us, if we reach like this woman, despite the crowd, if we are the exception to, to reach for Jesus' healing, we too will be made whole. Again, we are called to be the exception to the rule. The story continues and Jesus tells the woman her faith has made her well. And the text says in verse 35, while he was still speaking, still saying that to her, some people came from Jairus's house to say, your daughter's dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, and my contention is that Jesus is the only one that overheard, Jairus overheard the woman telling her story to how she had been healed. And my belief is that it gave him a little more faith to keep on going. The text says, but overhearing what they said, Jesus said to Jairus, do not fear, only believe. And then verse 37 says, he allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Jesus is about to go to Jairus' house now to bring Jairus' child back to life. And verse 37 says that Jesus chooses who will go with him. He allowed no one to go except Peter, James, and John. This work of bringing life to children, this work of stopping the violence in Chicago is exceptional work. For sure, it's not for everyone. It takes compassion, it takes commitment, it takes resources, it takes collaboration and love and work. Even in this story, Jesus doesn't allow everyone to go. Now, I can't tell you why Jesus left some folks behind, but the word says that he allowed no one to go except, that tells me that the disciples that went were the exception to the rule and some of us have been called to be the exception to the rule, to go and to make a commitment. I dare say, I hear you spirit, all of us have been called to make a difference and to be the exception to the rule. Stay with me, verse 38 says, when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. And I love Jesus, what did Jesus do? The text said, Jesus put them all out and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and he went in where the child was. Again, Jesus makes an exception about who will be in the room when he brings the child back to life. Church, 40 children were shot in Chicago this past month. My question is, will we be in the room to help bring children back to life? You see, children are not only being shot. Children are doing the shooting. There is a problem with the state of our children. Do you know that one way to measure the health of a society is by the state of the children? Do you know that, that one way to gauge progress of a society is by the progress of the children? There is an African greeting from the, the tribe of Maasai in Kenya. They greet each other by saying in their language, and how are the children? The traditional response is all the children are well. It means that peace and safety prevail, that the priorities of protecting the young, the powerless are in place. The traditional response, the children are well, means that the daily struggles for the existence of the people does not preclude proper caring for the young. Church, 40 children were shot in Chicago over the past month. Not many churches will be talking about it this morning, 
But I believe we are called to be the exception to the rule. We are called to be the exception like Jairus to seek the healing of our children, the most vulnerable among us. We are called to move beyond our positions, our privilege and our power, but to seek divine wisdom for answers, for ideas, for help, for accompaniment as Jesus accompanied Jairus. As we are determined to bring healing to the children, we are called. Dr. King reminded us about this network of mutuality. So just in case we think it doesn't affect us. Dr. King reminded us that there is a network and what affects one affects us all. Jesus said that the greatest commandment was to love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And when asked, who is my neighbor? He tells the story of the Good Samaritan. We, we labeled it the Good Samaritan, but it's the story about the marginalized on the side of the road struggling and hurting and injured. That's your neighbor, Jesus said. We are called to be the exception, like the woman in the text who intercepts Jesus for her own healing. Some of us have been going around and hanging around Jesus for a long time, and we have not touched Jesus' garments. We have not sought out our own healing. And the one thing I love about this text is that the healing of the child is connected to the healing of the woman. Those stories are intertwined, not by mistake, but on purpose, that they're all connected. Seek your healing. Be the exception. We are called as followers of Christ to be the exception, to say that if I could just touch Jesus' garment, I could be healed. We are called to be the exception, the disciples that Jesus commissions for this journey of healing for our children. Jesus took disciples with him on that journey to heal the child. We are called to be those that Jesus says, come on and go with me on this journey to heal children. How are the children? My prayer is that someday we can say the children are just fine. Jesus says, as I close in Mark 8, 34, whoever wants to be my disciple, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. We are all responsible for figuring out what is it that we are called to do. And for some of us, it is to help heal the children of the land. We are called to be the exception for the betterment of our communities, for the life of our children so that we can greet one another by saying, how are the children? My prayer is that one day we can say the children are just fine. And, and as I wrapped up the message, the spirit told me, you know, this is not new to Hyde Park Union Church. They've had a whole movement about gun violence in the city. So you're talking to folks who know what you're talking about. And I said, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. As Marvin Gaye says, we've got to find a way to bring some loving here today. My prayer is that we all can find a way to be the exception to the rule. God bless you.